TitleMatchNetwork.com. Uh, memories of your series with Shawn Michaels. Fantastic. Awesome worker. Shawn Michaels is great. You got some people that love him. You got some people that don't like him at all, you know, but man, what a great worker. I mean, just fantastic. We had great matches. Matter of fact, our WrestleMania matches was voted like one of the best WrestleMania matches and uh, at Caesars Palace. And Sean's just a great worker. I mean, if you've got any talent at all, okay, you can go out there with him and have an unbelievable match. Matter of fact, that's someone I would love to get in the squared circle again with and just tear down the house, okay? Have a good old school match, tell the story, and go at it. Have a battle. Yeah, you know, I'd love to get back in the squared circle with Sean because he's talented. He's been in a top position at WWF, WWE for many, many years. And uh, he knows the business, got great psychology, yeah. great worker, can still go. Mm -hmm. Everybody's seeing him right now, mm -hmm. can still go. So I'd love to get in there and give him a few chops and come off the top rope and give him a end of the trail. <laughs> Sean might say, no, you're not going to do that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be a little uh, music to your chin, but I would have to disagree with that because I still want to pay him back for Caesar's Palace. Right. Yes. Because I wanted to win the title. Yeah. And, I, 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 and a continental title. And, uh, you know, I had most people that followed that during that time had already beat Sean uh, twice before, but they were non title matches. I'd already beat him twice. One of those places were in. Uh, and uh, the old building that we used to do Raw's out of in New York, which was the uh, Manhattan Center. Manhattan Center, yeah. you got yeah. it. Oh well, man, you cut the electricity yeah. with a knife in that place. It was in the air. So I beat him there one time and beat him another time, and uh, we had a fantastic match at Caesar's Palace. Right. But, you know. Now, were you supposed to go over on him with the IC belt? Well, this this is a funny story. You know, I, I could be totally wrong on this, but you know. Uh, I, I was told about six months thereafter that, uh, well, Tatanka, we, we got to tell you something. I go, come in, come in the room. <laughs> this is what you got to tell me. Is this Vince or is this uh, no. else? <laughs> this is a couple, 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 couple workers. workers. Okay, and, yeah. and, uh, and, and I'll tell you who I was sitting there with. I was actually there with, uh, you know, Undertaker and actually there with uh, Brett the Hitman Hart, you know. Of course. And, uh, you know, uh, I never quizzed on it. I never went to the right. office and, and asked because I just didn't. I was the kind of person during that time that was enjoying what was happening, but I was always brought up about working hard. So to me, it was all working hard, working hard, working hard to get to right. the places. I was never looking to hurt anybody or, or go around the back door mm -hmm. or any of these things that maybe you hear wrestlers talk about and was never looking. I'm not that kind of person. Right. So, but I was told that, you know, hey, Tatanka, you were supposed to actually win the title. You know, they were building up for you to win the title. And you see, the fans wanted you to win the title. Yeah. You know, they were ready for you to win. They just knew you were going to win. But, you know, there was a story portrayed that, you know, that, you know, you were getting cocky and having an error arrogant attitude and I was going, huh, when did that happen? <laughs> right. I was like, when, when did I have an arrogant attitude? And you know, a lot of times a lot of us, you know, when we get up there and you know, uh, you might be very, very happy about things and people might perceive that totally different, but being arrogant or thinking, hey, look at me, it's two total different things, you know? Right. So it was portrayed what I understood to go back to the office that uh, I was having an attitude and that's what was told to me. So and that was the reason why I didn't get the bell. Right. Was there was there a problem with the finish in that match? The the one from WrestleMania, uh, the one from Las Vegas? Because it always looked like the ending of the match was. No, that that was what was planned. Okay. Yeah, right. that, yeah, that, that's what that's what was planned. But uh, you know, uh, and I think the finish that that was planned there, it, it just seems like you know, after thinking about it, you know, I think now, you know, you got Shawn Michaels and you got all this talent. Even then, we could have done something right. a, a way better finish. Yeah. So I think today, hmm, I wonder if there was something really there that maybe something was going to happen, and you know, right. last week or last couple of days beforehand, it, it was it was switched over. Right. You never know, but you know, 
you, you look at that, you can look back on things and go, well, you know, maybe I was supposed to win the belt, and you can just <laughs> soak in it and soak in it forever, right. as we talked earlier, how some guys can just have a, a bitterness mm -hmm. before. Right. You know, yesterday is over and done with. Exactly. New day. Today's a new day. What are we going to do today? So, you know, you can't look back at things. And I don't even, I don't even look back at that. Right. You know, I don't even think about it. You know, you know, instead of looking at the negative, what's the positive? Man, you're at WrestleMania. Right. Caesar's Palace. One of the greatest talents. And Vince had put a lot of work into me and other guys. And myself had put a lot of work on myself. Now over being one of the established stars of WWF, being able to go out and enjoy doing what you do in a square circle at Caesar's Palace. With millions of people watching WrestleMania, right. what more can you ask for if you're a professional wrestler? Exactly. Fantastic. Uh, what is your take on the whole issue between Sean and Brett? And was there a lot of tension back then? Uh, well, I had, uh, right during that time, I had left, okay, WWF, and uh, now we're wrestling entertainment. And, um, you know, I I'd watched that match and I knew Brett. And, uh, you know, I knew Sean too, but what I knew about Brett, just by what I know, you know, Brett was always a hard worker. You know, he would always want to go in that ring every single night, perform every single night to the best of his ability. I mean, again, what he portrayed, excellence of execution. That was serious to him. Every night he wanted to go out and portray to the best of his ability. So when I seen that match end up being the way it was, you know, I didn't know all the things behind it. But I knew something when I seen it, I knew something was not right. Because mm -hmm. I seen how the bell rang so quickly. I seen how Brett turned around and looked at Sean. I seen how Brett looked at the referee. And I seen how Brett popped right up. And that's just not, Brett makes everything, every move, everything count in the ring. So I'm going, wait a minute, something's not right, right here. Something was not right here, you know? And uh, I see Sean was like acting like well, I don't I don't know, you know. And I see you know Brett just you know he was very upset about something, you know. And then of course you know me being outside of wrestling, you know, not being on the inside of things, it all filtered back just like anything right. it goes through the grapevine. And I heard actually what had happened and how upset Brett was and all the things that took place after that. You know, and, and we were discussing this earlier, you know, it, it's a very, very um, sensitive, let's use the word, scenario to be in. Because if you're working for the company, we're wrestling entertainment, Vince McMahon is the chairman of the board. He's the authority of the company. You're not. He is. Okay. So in whatever decision he makes, that's the decision you need to go with. You know, we're also talking earlier tonight that sometimes, you know, guys, all of us, myself, you know, sometimes you make mistakes yourself. You're the one to blame. Or, or you do something wrong that you're setting up for something worse to happen mm -hmm. to you. You know, so a lot of times, you know, people are making their own mistake for something to be set up that it turns into a major catastrophe. If you would have just went with the flow. <laughs> all of this wouldn't be all of this wouldn't have happened, you know. Right. And it's just like that with a lot of guys in the wrestling business. And and where you have to learn is you have to learn and go, okay, let me learn from my mistake. Right. You know, let me get better from it. Let me get wisdom from my mistake. This happens again. What should I do? How should I handle it? Right. What's the best way to handle it? Because that shouldn't happen. That wasn't something like, let's definitely do this. No. You know, or there's some things there that, you know, went over the border. Yeah, there's some things that went over the border there. You know, I'm very, very strong in, uh, in um, my heritage, very strong in all people's heritage. You know, some of the things that were done in Canada to the Canadian flag, right. that's something that bothers me. I look at that and go, what did the Canadian flag do to you? Right, right. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or the Canadian country, you know? So there's some things you have to be very, very, you know, sensitive about. But uh, sometimes we bring things on ourselves. Mm -hmm. True. We how, definitely how did they get along ourselves. when you were there? Though? Did they? Was there always that tension between the two of them? Uh, well, 
Brett has always been, like I said, he's always been professional. Right. He's, he was always there. That, I mean, the company was always, I mean, you know he was doing the right thing. Right. Look how long he was champion for. Look how over he was. Uh, um, Vince had him in that spot for a long, long time. And, you know, and uh, he a great superstar, as well as Shawn Michaels. You got two of the top stars in our business together. But, you know, I think Brett was very, very because of business and being professional would work with Sean, but you could always just see that there was just something that just didn't flow with them. Right. You know, I don't know exactly what that was. You know, I don't know if Sean and Brett, you know, two big stars, you know, if it was that, or if it was just something that, you know, Brett didn't like about Sean or Sean didn't like about right. Brett, but you could just see that it wasn't that, flow or that meshing, mm -hmm. you know, you'd see that they would mesh, but it was because both of them had a job to do. Right. And that's different having a job to do as compared to, well, no, you have a job to do, but hey, Brad, what's going on? How you doing? You know, right. it wasn't that closeness that gotcha. you normally see, but respect for each other as far as, you know, what can be done in the ring and being able to work with him in the ring. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're both great workers. Sean gets this reputation at that time for being kind of clickish and his click of him and Scott Hall. And Oh, he definitely had a click. Okay. I mean, yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, you know, we all had, uh, you know, me, everybody called it a click, but you know, me, it wasn't a click to me. It was, these are my friends. Gotcha. This, right. this is what I like hanging out with. I mean, I loved everybody. I'm a right. people's person, but, I would travel the road with the Samoans and with Undertaker and, and we're personal. We'd go out all the time and, and drive all the time everywhere and eat together all the right. time. But yeah, Sean had his click and, his, and uh, you know, which of course was Razor and, you know, you had uh, Diesel was there right, with him right. too. And mm -hmm. you had one, two, three kid that was there and, and everybody had their groups that would hang right. out with. But I think just certain people just didn't, like that group together. You gotcha. know, they just felt, you know, what are they up to? <laughs> you felt a little intimidated by the group? Yeah, they could feel intimidated. Yeah. You know, in perception again, we talked yeah, about right, that. Yeah, right, right, right. It's everything. Sometimes people could think, well, these guys are up to something when they're not <laughs> right. up to anything. They just think that they're up to something. But, uh, yeah, people would always give Sean and that click a hard time at times. When so, you know, Sean, I haven't been able to spend time with him on the road, but I'm going to be soon, you know, I'll mm -hmm. see how Sean is, yeah. you know, but you know, at least he's openly expressing it. He was one of the ones that on the interview Monday night, his whole interview about Eddie Guerrero, if you've seen it, uh, his whole interview was not about wrestling. As Shawn Michael says, my fondest memories of Eddie Guerrero was not about wrestling, but it was about our common relationship in our faith, mm -hmm. our belief in our faith. So he talked about, Things that were very, very all faith, talking right. about God's kingdom, talking about where Eddie's at, he's in a better place. So, yeah, you know, no one's perfect, but I'm very, very happy to see Shawn Michaels saying those things. It's fantastic because he's a great known icon in our business. Yeah. So it's good for kids to be seeing Shawn Michaels say that. True. Fantastic. Um, you just were talking about meeting up with Shawn. Um, what are your thoughts on him being a born again Christian? Do you think that he's really changed? In well, it, it's fantastic. My faith is the same. I'm very, very strong in my faith with God. And, um, you know, uh, it's good to see that uh, wrestlers are being more outspoken about that. Nothing wrong with that. It's good to see. Uh, I was very, very impressed with the latest Monday Night Raw with what WWE portrayed about the late. Mr. Eddie Guerrero, a great superstar that will be sadly missed. Mm -hmm. And uh, my deepest sympathy goes to his family and his children because you can't replace a dad. Right. You can't replace um, You can't replace a hug. Mm. You know, I, I, I could sit here, even though I wasn't close friends with Eddie Guerrero, I could tear up because you can't replace a hug. You can't replace a dad. So that's a, a great, great loss and a great loss for our business. But, uh, you know, it, it's just say I'm getting off track there because I'm thinking about Eddie. Right, right, right now, actually, yeah. You know, so what, what did you, oh, I was asking about, uh, Sean being a born again Christian. Yeah. Um, 
it's great because the, the Monday night show, what impressed me so much was, you know, Vince coming out and what a great tribute show yeah. to Eddie Guerrero. You know, you got all these people coming out, seeing how he touched everyone's lives. And, and the way he touched their lives is because, yeah, everyone knew that uh, Eddie Guerrero had had problems before in the past. I didn't know, but I only knew because what everybody else had said. Said. But what was so, I think what was such an impact with everybody was that it's always good to see someone overcome. And he overcame by getting his life corrected and mm -hmm. by having faith in God, which God's the one to make that change. And also as you see what God wants of you in his word, it helps you change. You go, well, now I understand why I messed up. I shouldn't have been thinking that way. If I would have done this, I would have never gotten myself in that, that trouble. Mm -hmm. So it gives you wisdom. So it's great to see the show that they did because not only did it honor Eddie Guerrero, but it's tr great to see how he touched people's lives. Right. Because people just don't cry that way and get emotional no. that way because he was a jerk. Right. Uh, he touched people's lives. And, and when it's all said and done, when you're gone, what did you do? Yeah, it's great to be a professional wrestler. But did you touch people's lives? Did you make a change? And what I seen with that Monday night show, I was like, wow, Eddie Guerrero made a change yeah. because of his faith. And Shawn Michaels, I haven't had an opportunity to spend personal time with him since he's changed his faith. I was there before when he was not saved, okay? And all of us, when you're not saved or a born-again Christian, um, there's things you have to clean up. Everybody has to clean. That's what people don't understand. Going to church or serving God doesn't mean you're perfect. Right. Just means that, hey, I know there's some things about me I need to change, and now I've changed them, and there's even more things I've got to change. It means you're you're trying to walk a better life. You're trying to do right unto others, and right, which thus is right unto yourself. Titlematchnetwork.com